if you haven't probed the sacred mysteries of the life that is God, the life that is God begetting the life that is in the child, then how can you bestow the power upon physical science in its narrow spectrum to solve the ultimate equation of life and death? How can you depend on physical science alone for the answers when life in all of its splendor tells you there is so much, much more to living than the physical form, which is subject to disintegration and decay from the moment it is created? Just as the soul of the child in the womb comes and goes during gestation, so your soul journeys to higher octaves, etheric octaves, while you sleep. But during your soul travel, a portion of your soul substance, for want of a better word, remains with the body, for it is meshed with the mind, the cells, the organs. This explains why, when you are abruptly awakened in the middle of the night, you're a bit groggy at first, and then you become more and more focused as your soul fully re-enters. If you were violently murdered during sleep and your soul was in another plane, you would still experience intense physical and emotional trauma through all of your faculties, including in your spirit and in your soul. Is the child in the womb any different? Absolutely not. The offspring of humans is human from the start. And humans are complete and multidimensional. What may be lacking in fetal development is not lacking in the soul awareness of the mature son or daughter of God who is reincarnating to take up his or her next assignment on planet Earth. Since the soul goes through a process of meshing with the body during gestation, you may be wondering, as a corollary, how quickly the soul disengages from the body at the hour of transition called death. The soul does not exit the body as quickly as people think. This is why the ascended masters teach that the body should be placed on dry ice for 72 hours and then cremated. The prayers of loved ones and the minister, priest, or rabbi during the 72 hours following death are for the purpose of demagnetizing the light from the body and the soul consciousness from the body and severing the soul's emotional ties to the body. If the body is cremated any sooner than in 72 hours, the soul may not have entirely withdrawn from the body and it may suffer in the cremation fires. The ascended masters do not suggest embalming and autopsy except in cases suspected of foul play or where the family has a specific need to know the cause of the death of a loved one. The reason for this is that the light of the soul or the spirit's essence is in the blood. When the body is embalmed, the blood is removed and the embalming fluid is inserted in its place for preservation purposes. The ascended masters teach that the person's every cell which has meshed with the soul must be returned to God through the fire element. Embalming removes billions of blood cells and autopsy disturbs the organs and other billions of cells and interferes somewhat in the disengaging process. Think of how attached people get to their family home where generations have lived and died with all of the heirlooms and memories it holds. Just as we can be very much a part of our home, so we can be very much a part of our body. Often people who die don't leave their houses. They stay in the astral plane. You'll find them there ten years later, sitting in that old rocking chair where they always sat. Likewise, people do not easily leave their bodies. The preceding lecture was given by Elizabeth Clare Prophet, 
world-renowned author and spiritual teacher. The Summit Lighthouse is an international spiritual organization dedicated to universal enlightenment. Founded in 1958, the Summit Lighthouse has been a beacon of truth to thousands worldwide and a leader in New Thought spirituality. The preceding program has been brought to you by the Summit Lighthouse. For more information, call 1-800-245-5445 or visit our website at www.tsl.org. Outside the USA, call 406-848-9500 or write to the Summit Lighthouse, 63 Summit Way, Gardner, Montana, 59030, USA.